Hello everyone and welcome to the next installment from the comms guy. My name is James Powell and I work for JCOM Automation up here in Peterborough, Ontario, Canada. And uh, today's installment is titled The Problems with 4 to 20 milliamp part 1. And um, this uh, presentation or little discussion came in <clears throat> because of an article that uh, I came across in uh, from LinkedIn and it was published on uh, instrumentationtool.com entitled readings mismatch between field and control room why it's a very good article I would highly recommend that you use it uh, read it and I'll uh, provide a link to it in the, the notes below and it reminded me of an article that I wrote um, about three years ago back in 2015 entitled um, <clears throat> is uh, Profibus or 4 to 20 milliamp more accurate and uh, it was a quite a popular article in fact it was published up on um, uh, in Profi News and uh, in their popular article list here it's actually number still number two on the list three years later which I'm, I'm quite pleased by and uh, in this article I go over the problems with uh, 4 to 20 milliamp and I refer to it as the elephant in the control room it's you know this problem that everybody knows about but nobody really thinks about it, and they're just ignoring it but really it's quite a large problem and um, uh, this article will be the subject of my part two of this um, uh, YouTube video series I'm doing part one part two um, part two, I'll focus in on the article itself. In part one, I wanted to go over uh, some supporting documents that I found when I read this article. And by the way, th this article, Reading Mismatch Between Field and Control, it's quite a companion piece to mine because it brings up, it's looking at things from a slightly different angle. So it's showing different things, although there's a uh, definite overlap between the uh, the two articles so I was reading this and I was remembering back my article and then I was remembering some uh, videos that I made at the time and uh, I went into my archives and I found them and I thought hmm this would be rather interesting to show people and uh, because when I did them or when I tried out this experiment it absolutely shocked me so let me bring up the the first video here There we go. And here, I'm actually going to restart it here. So you notice 18.13 milliamps, and I'm pouring water in. Now, the water that I'm pouring in isn't just plain water. <clears throat> tap water actually doesn't have too much effect. And tap water, you don't pour tap, you, tap water doesn't get into instrumentations out in the field. What gets into the, to the instrumentation? rainwater so and rainwater that's been flying or going over uh, metal infrastructure so I took metal infrastructure from or sorry I took rainwater from my rain or from my wheelbarrow out in the backyard a few days after it had rained and um, so this was you know slightly yucky gungy water that I poured into the instrument and as you can see, the, the value went quite uh, crazy. And here, here I'm going to just play this one again. <clears throat> so I pour it in. It goes from 18.13. And um, here it goes, continues growing to like, uh, I think it hits over 20, 20 milliamps. And um, now, meanwhile, the control room wouldn't know this at all so here you have a wild variation and unless you were looking at things right at the time and think, oh, why did that suddenly change like that or you think oh that's probably a process change and uh, you wouldn't know it there's no way of knowing the value just changes you don't know it at all well when I was doing this I was thinking well okay how does it react with Profibus 
So I took a Procubus PA instrument and using exactly the same water, I poured it in. Now, in the back here, we can see the uh, wiring going into the rig and um, the link coupler, green lights. Uh, sorry for the quality of the video, it's a little wild here, but definitely not a professional job here. But uh, here it's address six, and we can see the value remains constant through the entire thing. It doesn't vary at all. We're back on the 4 to 20 milliamp one. It varied instantly. You got to change instantly. So uh, now, how does the waveform actually look? Well, this is the waveform from it. And as you can see, if you're familiar with Profibus PA or Foundation Field Bus, this is pretty much a standard wave. Th there's a little bit of gyration, a little bit of shakiness about it, but not enough to write home about. So I, I look at this and everything's fine. Now, what we know from field experience now is that this will remain good for about a year. Uh, when you get rainwater into a Profibus PA instrument, all's good for about a year. It takes um, repeated wetness and rust to build up and things get worse. Um, all that time, during that entire year, uh, your process variables are, still come into your control room with 100% accuracy. You know, the accuracy of the instrument is completely carried through right to uh, your control room, no problem. But what we do see <coughs> is a deterioration of the waveform. And um, here, let me just uh, oops, blow this up a bit and I'll position it a little better on your screen. And uh, so you can see this. This is what uh, the waveform will start to look like. So um, over time, you get a deterioration and you get something that looks like noise. And that's water. And um, th this characteristic look occurs actually both in Profibus DP and Profibus PA. You get the same sort of, it looks like electrical noise. And um, if you have any sort of preventive maintenance program in effect where you're periodically looking at your network, you'll be able to catch this way before uh, bus errors bring your network down. Now, if you're not looking at your network, you don't have any preventive maintenance in effect, then you'll find out when your network goes down, which is unfortunate, but you still keep 100% accuracy, where if you're using uh, 4 to 20 milliamp, you're, gonna, you're not even going to know that there was a problem. And uh, with Profibus, the, the network will deteriorate and you'll get bit errors and then the whole thing will fall apart. If you're watching your network and you have properly trained people, you're going to solve the problem long before the network goes down because it's very telltale on exactly why it goes down. So I hope you enjoyed uh, this quick little video. Uh, part two of this, I'm going to go over my old article in uh, details again. I got a little PowerPoint presentation of it. So hope you all have enjoyed this. Thank you very much. Today's video has been presented by JCOM Automation Incorporated. For more information about our products or our training courses, please see www.jcomautomation.ca. Thank you again for your time and attention. My name is James Powell. Bye.